believe that if this person has left the state, we'll be able to use the resources of our connections and relationships that we have with nine neighboring states to help bring this person to justice. So we hope this is resolved soon. New Yorkers just want to get on with life. I took the subway over here uh, early this evening with Chano to let New Yorkers know uh, we appreciate their resiliency, how tough they are, that they still keep coming on this subway. And uh, I was really grateful to see that uh, New Yorkers cannot be kept down. Join us now, the man you saw standing just over the governor's shoulder there, the chair and CEO of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, Jana Lieber. Mr. Lieber, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Good to be with you. So let's start with a little news this morning. There's been a lot of talk that the camera was down in that 36th Street station in Brooklyn. You say this morning you've got video of this man. Yeah, I mean, we have we have 600 cameras on that line just in Brooklyn, over 10,000 in the system, way, way up from where it was a couple of years ago. So we have a lot of video. The cops have been... The NYPD, obviously, great investigators doing a great job combing through that overnight. We have video now of three angles of this fellow, who is the person of interest, entering the system, um, uh, obviously with, with, with a lot of material which the cops have reported on. Uh, so a um, lot of video, a lot of evidence of, of where he came in and what he looks like, what he was carrying. Do you have any sense from that video of how he got away? Obviously, there was chaos, which explains a lot of it. Did you see him escaping? No, no. And again, as I say, 600 cameras just in Brooklyn on those, on those two lines that were on that platform. So a lot of evidence to sift through. But I think um, amazing work by the NYPD. They know who this fellow is. He has a ton of priors. They know his social media, um, you know. It, it, they are they are very much on the job for to find this guy and, and bring him to justice. We all were talking in the break. We all at this table rode the subway yesterday yeah. and, and last night. It was shoulder to shoulder. It was packed. There was a sense of kind of looking out for each other, helping each other. Um, the spirit of New York was on display in that moment as well as people, civilians, snapped into action. I thank you so much for mentioning it, Willie. I mean, obviously, this is a terrible, horrific day. Um, for the people who are on that platform and for New Yorkers in general. But we also saw in that moment of emergency the way New Yorkers respond. I mean, you saw people helping people who are wounded. You saw people standing over people to try to make sure um, they, they, they had the best chance of recovery and looking after each other. That, you know, coincidentally, I was on 4th Avenue on 9-11. I saw people walking back from Manhattan when the subways were down on 9-11, covered in the ashes of the Twin Towers, and New Yorkers are stepping out to give them water, to offer them rides, to offer them comfort. That same spirit was on display yesterday. It's what we count on to make New York work, because even though, you know, we're not always perceived as super friendly, in crises, people really step up. You, you know, Mr. Lieber, you more than most people know that the subway system in New York City is the, it's yeah. the beating heart of the city. And it's also an incredibly egalitarian system. Yeah. I mean, you can see like millionaires, well dressed, sitting next to someone, yeah. you know, with a canary on his shoulder or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all true. But, so that was really on the one train. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's yeah. But the larger issue yeah. is it now the fact that this alleged perpetrator, he had quite a backpack when he got on that system yesterday morning. He had guns, smoke bombs, a hatchet. Is there anything that can be done to minimize carry on stuff like that? Listen, we're going to take a look. Obviously, we're, we're looking at the forefront of technology uh, as everybody is. The mayor talked about that a little. The bottom line is that the, on that platform, in addition to the backpack and all those materials he left behind, I saw kids' schoolwork. Backpacks fit, filled with kids' schoolwork. So what we're not going to do is create an environment where people can't go about their business and create something that's impractical. This is our public square. This is the sacred public space in New York. As you said, it's what makes New York possible. We couldn't have the density and the access to jobs and education and culture that we have at this scale um, without the subway. It's also the place where New York's diversity shows best. Mm -hmm. All these different kinds of people in a, in a confined space figuring out how to get along every day. <laughs> that The N train runs through some of the most diverse neighborhoods in the city you've got. It's a Latino neighborhood. It's next to Brooklyn's Chinatown. It's right next to the center of, of Hasidic, Orthodox, Jewish Brooklyn. So it's an incredible melting pot, a gorgeous mosaic, as our former mayor used to call it. So this is a special the subway is a special place in New York's heart. We're never going to let it be taken over by maniacs. I feel like I should identify myself as an F train guy compared to the two one trains here. 
Uh, but I want to ask about two statistics. Transit crime has spiked 46% in the last year. You talked a little bit about that, but what more can be done to bring that down? But also the idea of, of ridership, that as the cities reopen, and certainly the subway is more full than it was, but it's still only at 60% of what it was in March 2020. How do you get more people back on the trains? Those are good questions. I mean, transit crime, the way we attack transit crime, and credit to the mayor and the governor, because they made it a priority at the beginning of the year, long before this happened, is we, one, need to put cops on platforms and on trains, which is where people feel vulnerable and where they are vulnerable. And the mayor had started to do that. The other thing is to just enforce the basic rules of conduct. The bad guys don't pay the fare. They, you know, they most of the time they come in, you know, illegally beating the fare, jumping the turnstile, going through the fare gate, the, the slam gates. So they catch a lot of people just by enforcing fare evasion and by enforcing rules of conduct. No smoking, no drug use, no, le you know, no carrying huge shopping carts. Those are ways that we start to diminish transit crime. And also by having cops on platforms and on trains, New Yorkers will feel safer. The goal, as you point out, is to restore ridership and the whole, uh, the, you know, the functionality of New York to where it was pre-COVID. We are getting back to normalcy, 60 percent, about double where we were a year ago. But we have a ways to go. We're still waiting for everybody to come back to the office. It's no secret that that is part of the, the equation. But we want New Yorkers to feel safe and to be safe. I trust in this governor and mayor to, to continue to make subway safety a huge priority. We're going to back them up. And there's been some pushback even from the new DA saying we're not going to prosecute turnstile jumping and all those kinds of things. What is your assessment of why things are objectively worse in terms of crime in the subway? There are the big splashy incidents, the yeah. horrific ones, but also they're every day on every platform there are things happening. Why is it different now than it was four or five years ago? Yeah, listen, there, there's, there's definitely, um, you know, COVID, I, I would say there's a little erosion of kind of public behavior in COVID in lots of parts of the city. We see it. There are obviously some, some folks who are struggling with all kinds of addiction issues, in some cases mental health issues, who have found their way into the public space. Um, we, we, we need to just reestablish that sense of order and normalcy. And I think the mayor, you, you heard him earlier, he really is committed to that. I think that's going to go a long way to addressing some of the issues that we're having. But New, you know, the subway is a microcosm of New York. We also need to, you know, overcome crime uh, in New York. And, and again, top priority for governor and mayor. They, again, started talking about it literally the day after, you know, January 1st. And we should point out, as we praise rightly, the NYPD and the FDNY, the MTA workers who pulled out wisely of wow. the station, encouraged people to get on the other train, which then pulled out of the station. There were some heads up work in that moment. Thank, thank you for pointing that out, Willie. I mean, they, you know, MTA workers, you know, unsung heroes of COVID, that even when we didn't know how transmittal was taking place, they showed up every day and helped the city power through those difficult early days of COVID. They showed up again yesterday, those guys who, the conductor and the motorman who are running that train on the R train, scrambled to get everybody on the train and move the train out of harm's way quickly. Big heroes. And every day, MTA workers are, are doing small heroic things. We don't want to overlook them. Chair and CEO of the MTA, Jano Lieber, with some news today that there is video now in the hands of the NYPD of this person of interest. Thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. You bet. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.